Hello, my name is Jerry Ratkin. I'm a course developer in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. In this presentation, we will look at setting the password for the root user and creating admin users with the Junos OS on a branch SRX device. But these procedures can be used on most uh, devices running the Junos OS. The first time you log into a device that has never been configured, that is a device that's fresh out of the box, you have to log in as the root user. Initially, the root user does not have a password configured. The root user is a super administrator using the super user login class, which means that they can perform every and any operation on the device. So after logging in for the first time, you should configure a root password. You can configure a plain text password, or you can configure SSH RSA keys and SSH DSA keys to authenticate root logins. We will use plain text passwords in this learning byte, but be sure to check out basic system management in the release notes for additional information, such as the use of SSH keys. So after you log in, you should configure the root password by using the root authentication statement at the edit system hierarchy level. I'm showing the root authentication method on the slide, and I'll show you this process on an SRX 110 a little later in this presentation. There are default requirements for plain text passwords in the Junos OS. The password must be between 6 and 128 characters long. You can include most character classes in a password. The classes are uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, punctuation marks, and other special characters. However, control characters are not recommended. Uh, valid passwords must contain at least one change of case or character class. So for example, you can create a password with upper and lowercase letters, or lowercase letters and numbers, that sort of thing. Of course, the stronger the password, the better, especially for the root account. Uh, these are default requirements for plain text passwords. You can change these requirements using the Junos OS, such as change uh, the minimum password length, change the maximum password length, and so forth, if you need to do so. And again, these are, in general, the, uh, the basic requirements for, for passwords. There are some exceptions, such as the, uh, the Junos FIPS edition, which has a little bit different require requirements. But this is essentially the, the general requirements for the Junos operating system. All users you create on a device must be in a login class. The Junos OS has four predefined login classes that you assign to users. The super user class can perform any and all operations on the device. And as I mentioned, the root user uses this class. So reserve this class for the key people who need total access to uh, configuring and monitoring the device. The operator class allows the user to work only in operational mode. This user can view the configuration, but they cannot modify it. The predefined permissions the operator class has are the clear network reset trace and view permissions. So essentially, the operator can do such things as uh, clear stats, monitor device status, perform resets, but not actually change the configuration. Uh, the next class is read-only, which as the name implies, has only the view permission. So this would be for someone who only needs to mon monitor the device. They cannot make any changes. They can only view. The last predefined class is unauthorized, which, no surprise, this user would have no privileges on the device. Uh, the predefined classes cannot be changed, but you can define any number of your own login classes with the various permissions you want in each, and then apply one of those login classes to an individual uh, user account. You can set the root user password, create new users, and assign them uh, login classes and passwords through either the, the Juno CLI, which is the command line interface, or the JWeb interface, which is a, a graphical GUI interface. I'll show you both of these on an SRX uh, 110. Uh, we'll take a look at the CLI method first. And shown here on the screen is a procedure I will take us through. We will log in as root, which will put us at the shell prompt. Uh, so we will have to start the CLI and then enter configuration mode. And there we can set the root password. Uh, next, we will create some uh, additional admin users with different login classes and show some of what they uh, are and are not capable of doing because of those login class permissions. Uh, the CLI example on this slide shows the command we'll use to create the different users and set their password. 
Then we can use the show system login command to view the users that we've created. OK, and then to finish the, uh, the demonstration, we will step out of the CLI, and I'll show you how to manage users using the, the JWeb interface. So let's uh, step out of the presentation now, and I'll take you through the, uh, the CLI method. OK, and as I said, uh, a brand new device, you're going to have the, uh, the root password uh, to log into it, but, uh, or I should say a root user to log into it, but the password will not be set. This device has already been set up. Uh, so I do have a password set up for the, the root user, so let's log in now. Okay, and again, we're logging, as, logging in as uh, root, so we're going to start out at the, at the shell, so we're going to want to do uh, CLI to get into the uh, command line interface. That'll put us into operational mode. And from there, let's move into configuration mode. And even though uh, this is already set up, I can show you how to change the user password, which is the same procedure you're going to use with the new device to initially give that root user a password. So in this case, from configuration mode, we want to do set system root authentication, and we'll use a plain text password. Create a new password and confirm it. And again, that's the same procedure you would use whether it's the first time you're creating that uh, root password or if you're changing it uh, afterwards. Now, if you do happen to forget or um, you know, misplace the, uh, the root password, there is a password recovery procedure you can follow, and that is in the, the Junos documentation. And also, we do have uh, an excellent uh, password recovery learning byte you can take a look at that will show you how to uh, perform the password rec uh, recovery procedure. OK, so now that we've got uh, our uh, root user set up with a password, I've already got a couple other users set up on this device uh, in different uh, login classes so I can show you the differences. So let's go through and add a couple more users and a couple different login classes so then we can do a, a comparison. So we're going to use the set system login user command. And we're going to uh, create a user. Let's create a new user. We'll call him John. We'll put him in the operator class. And again, create a plain text password. And notice the passwords don't appear on the screen as we're typing them. We'll confirm that password. OK, so now we've got it, uh, a new user in there as operator. Let's create one. Um, with the read-only class. So again, uh, you'll notice when I was typing that command that uh, I was using the spacebar to autocomplete, which is, you know, I'm not the greatest typist, so Junos helps out by giving us that, uh, that capability. Type in a couple letters, hit the spacebar, and it autocompletes auto auto the word or the command for you. So this time here, let's do a little bit different uh, trick here. Let's use the up arrow to repeat that previous command. Now what we can do is we've got some shortcut keys we can use to save us a lot of typing. So let's use Escape B, because Escape B will take us back uh, one word each time we hit it. So let's back up to the user that I want to uh, delete and create a new one here, at least in this command. We're not deleting the user, John. So let's do uh, Escape D which is going to uh, delete the word after the cursor. We'll create a new uh, user. Let's call him Paul. And then we can use another shortcut key, which is Escape F, which is going to move the cursor forward one word. Again, use Escape D. And we will put Paul in the read-only class. Set the password. Confirm the password. So again, you can use those keyboard shortcuts to uh, you know, help with your typing. And we do have uh, an, an excellent learning byte on that one also, just to plug another learning byte here. It's the, uh, the CLI shortcut learning byte. And uh, that's available to you. Take a look at that. And again, check the Juno's documentation for the complete list of, uh, of keyboard shortcuts. So now we've got uh, several users set up here. 
So let's do this. Let's use the show system login command. And we'll see we've got several users set up here. We've got John set up as an operator. We've got uh, Paul set up as read only. And we've got uh, George set, set up as the super user. Let's create one more here. Now let me make one for myself here. Create a password and confirm it. Okay, now because we have uh, changes to our configuration, we're going to want to commit. And I'm going to use a commit and quit because I want to step back into operational mode and show you the differences between these uh, different users and the different login classes that they are in. So commit and quit will commit the configuration and then put us back into operational mode. There we go. Now while we're here at the root user, which is a super user, let's hit the question mark because this will show us the list of commands that are available to the root user, which is everything and anything in the device. The, uh, the root user is a super user. So let's log out the root user. And again, because we are logged in as root, we not only have to exit out of the configuration mode and out of operational mode, we also have to exit out of the shell. OK, so back at the login, let's log in as John, who is set, set up as, a, as operator for a login class. Let's use the question mark again. And you can see uh, in the operator class, Basically, it's only operational mode commands. So notice right away that the configure command is missing from all the possible completions. In fact, if we try to enter configure, we can see that command is not even available to John because he's in the operator class. Okay, let's log out John and let's log in Paul. And Paul is set up as read-only, which means he can only view. So again, hit the question mark. You can see there's uh, a lot fewer commands available to Paul because he only has uh, view capabilities. He can't make any changes to the configuration at all. OK, so let's log out of there. And now we will step into the web interface. And here I'll log in as George because I know our user George is set up as a super user. We can do all the operations on this device. Because here in the, uh, in the web user interface, we're going to show you how to do all the same things we did in the CLI as far as uh, managing the users. So we're going to want to start out in the configuration tab. Go over to system properties on the left down to user management. This will show us the users that we have set up on the device, all the users that we just saw uh, in the CLI. Hit the plus buttons to expand, expand all these so we can see the user class and uh, I should say login class and user ID available to each. So we can see we've got a user named George who is a super user. And notice the, uh, the user ID here also. Um, I should also mention that the, the user identifier or the, the UID uh, is a numeric identifier that's associated with a user account. It has to be within a, a range of 100 through uh, 64,000. And it must be unique within uh, the particular device. It's optional, so if you don't assign a user ID uh, to a username, the software will assign one when you commit the configuration using uh, the lowest number available. So in this case here, all these users were created. The system gave them user IDs. We can see the different login classes for each of the users that we have set up. Now, just as in the CLI, we can manage our users. If we go over to the Edit button over here on the upper right, click that, and we'll see our list of four users and the classes that they are in. And from here, we can 
add users, we can edit users, we can delete users, just as we can within the CLI. So let's do this. Let's take this user Jerry and let's delete him. Okay, just like that we can remove a user. Let's take uh, user Paul and let's edit him. Let's move him up, give him some more permissions. We'll take him from read only. We'll move him up to uh, the operator login class. And then let's go ahead and add a user too. Okay, and uh, let's call him Ringo. User ID, again, it's optional. You don't have to uh, have to add one. We'll put a number in there. Full name, optional. You don't have to have it in there. But we will set up a password and confirm it. And our login class, you can see our four available login classes, super user, operator, read only, unauthorized. So let's make Ringo a super user. Click OK. You can see all the changes to our list here. Click OK. And Junos is going to give us a quick reminder here that we've made changes to the configuration. So let's go ahead and commit our changes. Just as we would have to in the CLI, we have to commit our changes before they'll take effect. So this will just take a moment here and then we'll be able to check the changes that we've just made to the configuration. Okay, and then we can go back to our users again. Let's just hit the plus button to expand them all. We can see the username Jerry has been deleted. We've added the new user named Ringo. He's in the super user login class. And then we edited one of our users, Paul, and moved him from read only up to uh, operator. So there you go. That's uh, everything in the web interface that we can do in the CLI as far as managing users. Okay, so let's step back into the presentation, and uh, basically that's it. Thank you, and uh, that's the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you for viewing this Learning Byte. I hope you found this information helpful. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning Paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.